Hey everybody, uh, this is the first and what's probably going to be a series of videos uh, to supplement what we have going on on our, uh, our Patreon channel, where we are, we have uh, made a custom PCB that will hook up to an Arduino and become a Simon Says game. So over on that, uh, our Patreons, we are making the code to do this after having made the hardware. If you'd like to join in on that, go check out our Patreon. There are still plenty of these left and uh, we would love for you to join us. But in the meantime, there are some things that I kind of gloss over on the Patreon and that I want to come back here and do in a little more detail for some uh, Arduino Essentials. Uh, you read the card. So, so variable types is what we are talking about right here. Pretty much, our, the Arduino doesn't assume anything. Whatever you tell it something is, it will believe you. And when it sees something it doesn't recognize, it will want to know what it is. So that is where our, our types are. Uh, pretty much any time you have the variable, you're going to have the, uh, the type, the name of the variable, and then at some point the value, whether or not it's declared initially or not. And for all intents and purposes, we have uh, four sizes of variable, and then there are different types, whether they be signed or unsigned. You can think of these uh, different variable sizes as buckets. Uh, we've got our whole different group of buckets right here, and any time you are having the code deal with one of these buckets, it's going to deal with the whole thing. So we can kind of think of these um, as, as being full at all times, but either full of ones or full of zeros. The most basic unit we can have is just a single bit, uh, which in the case of the Arduino code we're going to call a boolean, which abbreviates bool when you're defining what kind of type it is. And in our metaphor of buckets, this isn't really even a bucket yet. This is just either a one or a zero, which is a, a, red, a red bead or a blue bead that we'll stack later on together into our buckets to create larger variables. The first one of those actual buckets, our small one, is going to be the byte. Uh, the byte is 8 bits. It's the fundamental unit of measure that we're going to build up on other computer stuff. Um, so kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and so on and so forth. Um, this is going to be between 0 and 255, and it is naturally unsigned. That's, yeah, naturally unsigned. I'll get to that in a second. Moving on up our, our chain of order of mag orders of magnitude for Arduino purposes, we have an integer, which abbreviates int, and we have long, which doesn't abbreviate, is just long. Uh, the last two of these are naturally signed. What this means is that they can be negative. Whereas a byte is just a big pile of data between 0 and 255, the int and the long are naturally signed. And the way that works in the binary is that the, uh, the very first digit, the most significant digit, becomes a 1 to make the rest of it negative. So our, uh, our max range here is, uh, on the high end, is 32,767, but it can also be negative 32,768, uh, because when you're writing that out, uh, having a 1, and in the case of this, a 1 followed by 16 zeros, you can't have negative zeros, that becomes negative uh, in the integer uh, 32,768. In a very similar pattern, if we get up to 32 bits, that gives us what's called a long. They are naturally signed and can be about plus or minus 2.1 billion, which we rarely ever need. For most of my purposes, I'm either using a boolean, a byte, and sometimes an integer if I may need the, the plus or minus. Where these are just the most basic and typical uh, types or, or names of, of types of variable that you're going to see when writing with Arduino, they're not the only ones. Uh, most of these have different versions. For example, a byte, uh, still at 8 bits, can be called a character. However, a character is naturally signed, which is going to give it a range of between negative 128 and positive 127. If you really want to be overwordy, you can also have an unsigned character. which is just a lot of extra writing to say byte, because those are the same things. This is valid according to the compiler, but it's dumb. 
An integer can also be called a short or a word. Short is the exact same thing as an integer. It is a signed unit of data that is 16 bits, whereas a word is naturally unsigned, so that's more like just a bigger version of a byte. When we're up the chain with the long, they're really just called a long, but an alternate way to write this on the unsigned version of things, because longs are naturally signed, is uh, uint32 underscore t. And that same pattern will also work uh, if you want to have a uh, unsigned version of integer. So a word and a uint16t are the exact same thing. These are the most common ones that you're going to see, so these are the ones we're going to use, although in my stuff I will sometimes use the, uh, the uint version of things, uh, although they are pretty much interchangeable. Uh, back to this, we have a, uh, so you have your, your type, whether this be a, bull a boolean, a byte, a long, whatever, the name of it, and you can call it whatever you want. It does have to be one without any spaces in it. Generally cannot have punctuation and... Um, And your capitalization matters. So uh, this uh, very bumpy text N with the name there will show up as differently to the compiler as just lowercase varin name. You will very often see this in your code as say integer variable name equals and then there's a number and to the semicolon. One alternate on this is a constant um, variable, which is no longer a variable. Uh, but when you have this as your, your definition of whatever it is, and you try to change that later on in the compiler, it'll put up a flag saying, uh, you told me this can't change. Uh, so that's something to, to look out for. And there are essentially three other types of variable or pseudo variable that exist. Uh, I will go over those very briefly. First is the void. And a void, as you might guess from the name, isn't really a variable, but when you are using that in code, it functions on the same syntax as a variable. So when you Write in void, it'll turn what it's, its blue color. You can then name it, give it its parameters, and usually this is going to be how we're going to write our functions. We have a float. A float is a 32-bit uh, piece of data, but it can have decimals. I don't offhand recall the max minimum range or how many decimals it can have, but you can have very specific numbers here. Uh, I think it's like 34 significant digits. Something like that. I don't recall offhand, but um, floats are decimals when you need those. And last, if you can see through the glare, there is a string. A string is basically how you're going to use one of these uh, data buckets to store a line of text instead of just a regular number. I need to sum up. When you are choosing what variable type to use, you want to use the smallest one you can get away with, because every time you call one of these, it's calling the entire bucket. So if you only need a few bits of data and you're using a long, you've got this whole big bucket of, of data and you're only using a couple pieces of it. But the software is essentially lifting this whole thing as if it were full and is having to do more work. So you want to, if you only need that little thimble or shot glass size for the bytes, that's what you want to call your variable as. And that's pretty much it. Um, you have your, your types. Types have sizes. Types have signs or not. And this is kind of, you can see the chart here. That is the sum up. Use the smallest one you can. And having a good understanding of this will definitely help you write uh, cleaner, more elegant, and easy to work with code. I hope that was helpful, and there will be more of these as I come across uh, little things that I'm not going to go over in any kind of detail on the Patreon side of things. There will be more of these to, uh, to explain those little things. I will see you then.